Nick Bosa is already shaping up to be one of the best pass rushers of his generation. Since the day he was drafted in 2019, he is seventh in the NFL in sacks over that time period with 40, and that's while missing almost the entire 2020 season with a torn ACL. Sometimes I think that people believe that grading an edge rusher and seeing what they do well and what they don't is easy, especially with someone like Bosa, because the speed is obvious, the strength is obvious, the fluidity and agility is obvious, and I think that sometimes we can fall into a trap where we say, oh, he's great because he's the best athlete, rather than acknowledging the details and nuance of what makes a great pass rusher a great pass rusher. So today I want to set the record straight about what makes Nick Bosa special, not just athletically, but on a technical level, how he is so dominant. And just a heads up, we're going to go deep into the weeds on pass rushing technique today, so get comfortable. First things first, Bosa bases every club that he has in his bag off of his natural power. That is his number one threat, that when literally push comes to shove, he can get lower than you, he can run through your outside shoulder, he can shorten the corner and finish for a sack. Oftentimes you will see him relentlessly attacking with power over and over and over again just to condition tackles into having to anchor down against that bull rush, and that's when he hits them with a wide variety of counter moves off of that power. Most notably, his patented double swipe move, which some people call a side scissors move. Now, if you want to know how that move is done and why it works so well as a counter move, I happened to catch some footage of Bosa practicing it when I was at training camp this past August. You might remember that video where the 49ers comms team was kind enough to let me roam the sideline and take pictures for a few days, and this just so happened to be one of the videos that I took. Here's how it works. Bosa can use this move from either version of his three-point stance, meaning with his inside foot up or his outside foot up, he can do both. And specifically in this clip with his inside foot up, his feet being in that stance changes the length of his stride that he needs in order to close that distance on the blocker. What I mean by that is, in order for this move to work, he has to start it with his inside foot planted, because that's what he's going to be pushing off with to generate that explosive jump around the corner. So if his inside foot is up in his stance pre-snap, he has to take two big steps in order to close that distance fast enough in order to have that inside foot in position where he can explode off of it. By contrast, if you look at this sack that he got against New Orleans in week 12, he actually switched to his outside foot being up in his stance, which changes the number of steps that he's going to be taking in order to close that distance. Now it's going to be three slightly shorter steps in order to get his inside foot in the exact same spot, where it's within range of the tackle's punch and then he can push off of it and throw that side scissors move and get around the corner. Like I said, he can throw this move from either stance. He just has to change up his stride length in order to do it. But I'll touch more on that stride length and his stance in a minute. The second component of a side scissors move is how the hips and hands work together. You can see this in the training camp clip again, since it's in slow motion. That step around the corner is really more of a lateral step than a vertical one. He's almost literally sidestepping the tackle while swiping his punch away, and once that lateral step lands, he's going to cross his feet over and keep his inside knee pointed at the quarterback. This whole part is critical because he has to keep his hips torqued around the corner and pointed at the QB, because as a pass rusher, your body is only going to go where your hips are pointed, so they better be pointed at the right spot. Going back once more to that sack against the Saints, I think there's always been a misconception that winning around the edge means you run past the tackle and then turn inside, but it's the opposite, really. You have to be turning as you round the corner. You need to already be pointed in that direction when you beat the tackle, and very few pass rushers in the league are as good at keeping their hips pointed at the quarterback as Nick Bosa. He's an excellent finisher just from that little technical nuance alone. Now, going back to stance and stride length again for a second, there are a lot of edge rushers in the NFL, great edge rushers even, that constantly have a little bit of a false step in their rush, meaning that off the snap, they have a tiny kind of like hitch in their first step of the rush as they're pushing off, and so sometimes they don't fire out of their stance as fast as they want to, or sometimes they misjudge exactly how long their stride should be because that hitch can be a little bit inconsistent and throw off their rhythm. That is not so with Bosa. Oftentimes before the snap, you're going to see him really kind of stretch himself out, and he looks almost like a cat getting ready to pounce. And that's very intentional, because when he then coils back up, he's always perfectly loaded on his front foot. 
And again, this can be either his inside foot or his outside foot. A lot of rushers can only do one or the other and feel comfortable, but Bosa does both and it drives tackles crazy because they don't know exactly how quickly he plans to close the distance and he's really unpredictable with those multiple stances. But anyway, we'll get to that in a second. When it comes to loading on that front foot to avoid false steps, going back to that training camp video again, you can see just how much of his weight is driving that foot into the ground to keep it anchored there. His back leg intentionally is a little bit more than 90 degrees because he wants to force himself to take some weight off of that back foot and redistribute it to the front foot. A lot of rushers will have that back leg be a bit acute and less than 90 degrees, which will then cause more weight to be then distributed to the back foot. And at the same time, he keeps the small of his back above his head. His off hand is raised back like he's in a track start and his front hand is even with his eye line. So much of his weight is loaded onto this front foot because of how his stance is distributed. And what that does is it forces him to direct all of his energy through that one leg into the ground. It roots it in place so there's no false step, there's no wasted movement, there's no wasted energy. He just rocks up onto that toe, pushes off, brings that off hand through to help him stay balanced, and there he goes. This efficiency of movement out of that stance allows his explosiveness to shine, and he'll violate a tackle's personal space immediately as a result. Eliminating that false step is one of the main reasons why he can reverse his stance and keep his inside foot forward, not his outside foot, but still close the distance on a blocker in two steps instead of three. And that unpredictability is a fantastic advantage for him. Watching through so many of his sacks and pressures, there are countless examples where he clearly gets into striking range quicker and earlier than a tackle anticipated, and so they miss a punch or he gets to them first and just runs right through them. And I firmly believe that his technical discipline has just as much to do with that as his natural physical gifts. But beyond his athleticism, his stance, or his technique, I think another underrated aspect of Bosa's game is just how he can read and adjust to a tackle in the middle of a matchup. Going back to week 15 against Seattle, while I was preparing for this episode, I started to notice by the second half in all of Bosa's reps as a pass rusher that rookie left tackle for the Seahawks, Charles Cross, might have been tipping his pass sets meaning the types of sets he was using and the techniques he was using as a pass protector. And so I started charting the game all over again, paying close attention to Cross just to see if I was crazy. And I'll be damned, he was tipping his pass sets before the snap. Five minutes later, after continuing to chart the game, I realized that Bosa had also picked up on it as well. And boy, did the rookie pay a terrible price for that. I'm going to show you exactly what he was doing, but before I dive into it, I want to thank some of the people who made all of the content that we've done this season possible. From going to Niners training camp to seeing games in LA, Miami, Buffalo, Dallas, Austin, and beyond, I owe so many of the experiences that I've had this year to my friends over at SeatGeek. And I can tell you right now, if you're a 49ers fan and you want to go to that playoff game over in Levi Stadium and see Nick Bosa slaughter offensive linemen with your own eyes, you can use promo code BRETT and get $20 off those tickets at SeatGeek. Or honestly, for anyone else who wants to go to NFL games for the rest of the season or concerts or NBA games or baseball, I mean, you name it, they got it. I'm sure some of you watching this right now are San Francisco Giants fans, so you can go see Carlos Correa in I mean, uh, you can go see Jock Peterson in person. Wouldn't that be fun? Probably. So if you want any discounts on tickets, uh, anything at all, go check out SeatGeek. Use promo code BRETT. Get 20 bucks off. And thank me later. Or don't. Maybe you just turned off this video because I mentioned Carlos Correa. But anyway, let's go talk about Charles Cross, shall we? I do want to preface this, by the way, by saying that I do think that Cross is a very good rookie and he's going to be a great player for the Seahawks long term, but he does have a tendency to tip what kind of pass set he's going to be using. And Nick Bosa took advantage of that repeatedly. With very close to 100% accuracy in the matchup with Bosa that I charted, whenever Cross's feet were wider than his shoulders and his outside toes were vertically even with or in front of his inside heel, he would do a very aggressive pass set that some people call the mud technique after legendary offensive line coach Howard Mudd, who heavily advocated for this type of pass set because more or less, it allows the tackle to take the fight directly to the edge rusher and restrict the amount of space they have to operate. 
In reps like this one, the mud technique can catch an edge rusher off guard and basically knock them off their track, which is obviously ideal when it comes to pass protection. Now, as a counterexample, also with near 100% certainty, whenever Cross's feet were slightly more narrow before the snap with his toes from his outside foot slightly behind his inside heel, then he'd be using what's called an angle set, which is certainly less aggressive, but also less prone to getting beat early in the rep. In an angle set, Cross's landmark is deeper in the pocket and does allow more space for Bosa to work with and a much, much larger runway, so to speak. But for someone as athletic as Cross that can actually get to that landmark cleanly and with balance, you could argue that angle sets are generally the more reliable technique. Now, why these two different techniques and their different pre-snap stances matter is that against a rusher like Bosa that's going to pay attention to every detail of every rep, eventually he's going to catch on, and eventually he's going to punish whichever technique you're using because they both have distinct strengths and weaknesses. And that brings us to this rep, early in the fourth quarter. Once again, Cross's feet are slightly wider than his shoulders, and his outside toes are even with his inside heel, so Bosa knows ahead of time with near certainty that this is going to be another aggressive pass set. From Bosa's three-point stance with his outside foot up, he takes one big step slightly inside and trusts that Cross is going to be instantly closing the rest of that distance for him with that aggressive pass set. From there, Bosa then plants off of that left foot and he throws a textbook side scissors move like we broke down earlier and then flattens down the corner and finishes with a big hit on Geno Smith. Smith did happen to get this ball out, barely, but this was still a great rep and one of several one-on-one -on -one wins that Bosa and the rest of the 49ers pass rushers had against Cross starting in roughly the third quarter of that game. Overall, when looking at Bosa, not just this season, but in any season he's played since he was drafted in 2019, he is one of the few edge rushers in the league that truly has no weaknesses. Physically, he's built like a Greek god and has every trait you could ever ask for in an elite defensive end, but on top of that, he's also a versatile technician with an arsenal of pass rush moves that he can throw from any stance, and he's an extremely instinctive player that can tailor his rush plan to his opponent every single week. There is absolutely nothing not to love about Nick Bosa. And truth be told, right now, he is the standard that all young pass rushers should be held to. I don't know if he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year this season, but at least for me, if I had a choice, he is who I would vote for. If you guys are still here this late in the video, thank you for helping feed the almighty algorithm. Make sure to drop a like and a comment to help the channel grow if you feel so inclined. And I hope all of you have a wonderful holiday season with your family and or friends. Make sure to stay warm. It is extremely rough out there, and I'll see all of you again very soon.